Good afternoon, I'm Malcolm Jordan and this is your Midday News Fix for Wednesday the 15th of November. A good meeting. That's Chris Luxon's short description of the first face-to-face, three-way meeting between the three party leaders in Auckland this morning. Political editor Jason Walls has more. Winston Peters was the first to pull the pen and post a photo of the three men in what looks to be a hotel boardroom. Luxon followed roughly six minutes later, saying, although there's still work to do, the three parties are making serious progress. Seymour, meanwhile, simply said a government is forming and that ACT will ensure it's a government of real change. Wellington Mayor Tori Fano has directed council staff not to remove a pro-Palestine mural. Wellington reporter Azaria Hal has more. A mural reading Ceasefire Now was painted on a dedicated graffiti wall at Waitangi Park. Tori Fano calls it a message of peace and says unfortunately another mural calling for a free Palestine was removed by council officers from the same spot. The mayor says the art should be embraced and ended her statement on social media saying free Palestine, ceasefire now. Auckland's MFAT and US consulate buildings and Wellington's Premier House were also targeted by pro-Palestine vandalism yesterday morning. A whistle-blowing clinician has lifted the lid on the dire state of dementia care in Southland. The clinician has revealed cases of assault and police call-outs to de-escalate dangerous behaviour. The Otago Daily Times reports the serious harm has been detailed in a letter by Aged Care Commissioner Caroline Cooper calling for urgent attention by Te Whatu Ora. She says she was contacted by the clinician raising concerns of physical and possible sexual assaults. Te Whatu Ora Chief Executive Margie Upper says she's concerned and they're working hard to try to resolve the complex issue. A second contingent of Kiwi firefighters are arriving in Queensland to help battle the state's ongoing bushfires. The team of 22 will replace the New Zealand strike team who are already there. Travel is a top priority for Kiwis, although many face heightened anxiety about going abroad post-pandemic. Data from insurance company Allianz shows 87% of people intend to travel within the next year. While a third are concerned about catching COVID, they're most worried about cancelled or delayed flights or lost luggage. Forest and Bird says the outpouring of support for the bird of the century has been unbelievable. The Putekiteki has taken out the top spot following US TV host John Oliver's controversial global Lord of the Wings campaign. It's fun to say Putekiteki. Poo, techy techy. It feels like your tongue is tap dancing. And there are so many fun facts about it, like the fact that they are known for carrying their babies on their backs. Competition spokesperson Lynn Freeman says they've received over 350,000 votes from 195 countries. To sport. Emma Hayes, the new coach of the United States women's football team, will become the sport's highest paid female gaffer on a contract estimated at $2.6 million per annum. Liverpool's Luis Diaz has reunited with his parents in Colombia for the first time since their kidnapping this month. And New Zealand cricket captain Kane Williamson has savoured the 50-over World Cup, regardless of the debate over the format's future. The Black Caps enter their ninth semi-final in 13 editions tonight against India in Mumbai. I'm Malcolm Jordan. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at 5pm from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.